The OnePlus 5 was announced three months ago and I thought I'd hold off getting one back then, but eventually I did get my hands on one. And so here's what I think about the OnePlus 5, getting it after three months. Let's face it, the phone is very similar to the iPhone 7 Plus, right from the metal finish, the curved design, and even where the logo resides. You could say it's a generic smartphone design, but the resemblance to the iPhone 7 Plus is kind of uncanny. The feel in the hand is very robust and good, but I sort of think the phone is a bit too thin and lightweight. Over my time using the phone, I managed to drop it a couple of times, and even though the drops were very severe, the phone managed to do just about well. It managed to get away with it with just a scuff at the top, and with the Gorilla Glass 5 on the display of the phone, it didn't show any cracks. Although if you are dropping the phone into a liquid surface or are using it in the dust, um, you'll be disappointed to know that the phone doesn't have any sort of IP certification, especially when using it in the dust, because that's a major factor um, when using the phone in Dubai especially. Now, when I made my first impressions video a couple of months ago, I wasn't really happy with OnePlus sticking to a 1080p or Full HD display on the OnePlus 5. Um, I thought a change was due and of course OnePlus didn't think so. But when I got my hands on the OnePlus 5, my opinions really changed. The 1080p display on the OnePlus 5 is one of the best displays in the market. Being AMOLED, you get those deep blacks as well as saturated colors that are vivid. So overall, it makes for a really good experience and you can customize the colors on the display to your liking as well, which I thought was a plus point. Of course, there's been this issue about the jelly scrolling effect going on with the OnePlus 5, and fortunately, I didn't get to notice it at all when using the phone, so that's always a good sign as well. There are tons of other customization options available on the display as well, which I'll go over later in this video. In spite of the display being this good, the phone comes with its fair share of bezels. Coming from previous bezel-less phones, it was hard to adapt and the overall experience wasn't as immersive as I got from previous smartphones. Combining the display experience with the speakers was pretty average in my opinion. The speaker gets really loud and it's a bottom firing speaker, but it distorts at louder volumes and when you're holding the phone and consuming media, it's really really easy to cover. So you have to watch out not to cover the speaker, which can get uncomfortable at times. Still though, things like the dual SIM slot as well as the 128 gigabytes of UFS 2.1 storage, which makes read and write speeds on the phone a bit faster, so you'll get noticeable differences when installing applications, is always a good thing to have. Honestly, I was blown away by the performance of this phone. You get the highest end internals and you get eight gigabytes of RAM. So pretty much everything you throw at the phone, it handles like a breeze. On top of that, Oxygen OS is very, very bloatware free and it doesn't do a lot to hinder the experience. And everything from browsing the web to playing games worked fine, apart from one 2D game. I tried to play this game called Blue Edge and it kind of stuttered and it was pretty surprising for me. And when I checked the forums for the OnePlus website, I did see this recurring issue on many OnePlus 5 devices, but it's no big deal. I think a small update should fix the issue. But what's more impressive is the level of customization the phone brings to the table. Changing how the UI looks and making it a dark theme, um, changing from the overall hardware buttons to software keys, and things like capturing longer screenshots are always welcome. But one of the more unique things about the OnePlus 5 is the reading mode. So if you're willing or if you like to read books a lot on your smartphone, you can now do that with the reading mode on the OnePlus 5. That constantly changes how your screen's temperature works by observing the ambient light around, using the sensor of course, and making for an overall better experience when reading books. And if you've watched till here, I know what you're thinking. What about the camera? The device has a 16 and 20 megapixel camera combo and they work in tandem quite well. You get this sort of lacking dynamic range in most pictures, but the overall detail in pictures is really, really impressive. Um, you can capture some great images when you edit photos as well. And the telephoto lens does a good job in most conditions also. Um, I think when you have more light, 
you get better pictures when using the portrait mode as well as when you're zooming in two times for lossless quality but as soon as the lighting sort of drops you start to see a noticeable drop in quality. The same goes for pictures when you've taken them with both or the 16 megapixel camera with there not being enough detail in sort of night shots. On the other hand, the 16 megapixel front camera for selfies is an absolute treat to use. You get detailed pictures both in the day and night and even for video, I think it's pretty stable enough for constant vlogging. Yet, I wouldn't recommend using the primary camera to capture video. It doesn't come with any sort of optical image stabilization and both the 1080p footage and the 4K footage doesn't look as sharp as other cameras I've tested. The 1080p footage is a lot more stable because it does have electronic image stabilization while the 4K footage looks very, very shaky. There is an update due to fix this electronic image stabilization for 4K uh, video recording, but I haven't got it yet and I didn't get it when I was testing the phone So I couldn't really try it out But if you really want a more detailed sort of camera breakdown Definitely check out my full camera comparison between the LG G6 and the OnePlus 5 which is in the cards above So to sum up, let's talk about the battery life on the OnePlus 5 when OnePlus decided to go with the 3300 milliamp hour cell, it was sort of a downgrade from the 3T, which had a 3600 milliamp hour battery. And I kind of suspected the battery life to take a hit, and I was pretty right, unfortunately. When I used the phone over Wi Fi, cellular data, and using Bluetooth for the whole day, I got around 3.5 to 4.5, maybe just 5 hours of screen on time, which is not really good for a 1080p display. Um, I was constantly finding myself charging the phone sort of during the late afternoon or evening and even though it does have dash charging which allows you to go from 0% to 50% in 25 minutes, very impressive, but the battery resilience didn't really impress me whatsoever. And there you have it, those are my thoughts on the OnePlus 5. Would I recommend it to someone in the market at this budget right now? From a pure performance perspective, Yes, but does it come with its fair share of flaws? Yes as well. I think sort of the pricing of the OnePlus 5 puts it in a very tricky market when you've got the likes of the Huawei P10 as well as the LG G6 selling for similar prices. So if the OnePlus 5 was priced maybe even 200 dirhams cheaper than those models, the choice would be a no-brainer. Well, what do you think about the OnePlus 5? Do you happen to own one or are you in the market to buy one? Let me know in the comments down below and definitely subscribe for more reviews as well as other videos in the near future. I'll see you in the very next video. Adios.